evening from Las Vegas. It's time for the 2023 Cliff Keen Las Vegas Finals on Flow Wrestling. This field boasted 138 ranked wrestlers to start and has now been pared down to the final 10 matchups. Alongside my broadcast partner, John Kozak, I'm Christian Piles, and we could not be more excited for these finals matchups. We've seen national champions, national finalists, all Americans all fall short of these championship finals. Winning a title here cements your standing as one of the best of the best in collegiate wrestling. Kozak, looking at these first five matchups, which bout should fans be most excited to watch? Yeah, every one of these first five finals are going to be absolutely incredible. But the one that I'm circling, 149, you have number one in the country, Ridge Lovett first, number four, Caleb Henson. For me, this is the match to watch. And for the second half of finals, what is it about this 285 pound match that makes it a fitting main event of the evening? Yeah, you got number three, Lucas Davison, number six, Younger Bestita. Both these guys, big athletic heavyweights. We should see a lot of offense from both Davison and Bestita. Bestita up from 197 at 285, looking like a title contender. We're going to be getting started here with 125 pounds. It's going to be Brett Unger of Cornell. Taking on Stanford surprise finalist, Nico Provo. Talk about Nico Provo's run, John. Nico Provo came into this tournament, tournament ranked number 30 in the country. He beat number 15, Kyson Terakina, number 16, Jory Volk, and number three, NCAA runner-up, Matt Ramos. Provo has had a run here, but one more match to go against a really tough Brett Unger. Brett Unger had a nice semifinal performance. We called that match. It was a late takedown against, um, I forget who he's wrestling already. Michael D'Agostino. Yeah, D'Agostino of yeah. Michigan. The injury default. Mm -hmm. Underway now, 125 pound finals in the red for Cornell. That's Brett Unger. And in the white of Stanford, Nico Provo. Forehead to forehead to start. Now in the collar ties. Yeah, we saw Unger kind of slow start in his semifinal match against D'Agostino, but then he got his offense going in the second period. Unger Really tough on top. He can win matches close. He defeated Brandon Kaler two to one in the quarters and Diego Satella three to two in his round of 16 match. Tight ties to get this one started. Provo's finishing ability has been what's really impressed me in this tournament, especially against Matt Ramos. Once he got to the single leg, was very successful in finishing. Brett Unger can kind of lull you a little bit. He had a pretty subdued beginning of, to his match to Michael Diagostino, and then out of nowhere fired a really nice single leg, got the finish, and then the ball just kept rolling from there until mm -hmm. the match was over, and Diagostino couldn't continue due to injury. Use your right. Use your right hand. Yeah, expect some feeling out time in this match, even if you think back to Provo's win over Ramos. Kind of late takedown in the period. And that's what we saw against with Unger too. Kind of waited until the match wore on to fire off any committed attacks. Provo hanging in the inside control on the left side. Unger clearing out of it. Looked like a misdirection from Provo, le uh, right to left. Nothing there. Provo went one and two at NCAA tournament last year. Unger round of 12. And this year with 125 so wide open, man, you feel like these guys have kind of moved up a tier, maybe into that title contention conversation. Crazy to think about, but we said it in the off season, 25 is gonna be the weight of chaos and it's been nothing but that start to finish. 50 seconds to go in the first, no real committed attacks from either guy. Maybe a little more offense from Provo, but nothing meriting a stall warning. And Unger looked like he was considering passing the elbow. In the corner for Unger, Nick Wazdowski and Mike Gray. And for Stanford, new head coach of the Cardinal, Chris Ayers, alongside NCAA champion for Northwestern, Ryan Deacon. In the corner for Provo, 10 seconds to go. Not much action here. 
No one really tried to score in that first period, John. Yeah, no real committed leg attacks. I think they barely touched each other's legs, so no. not much in the first. But uh, that's really not all surpri that surprising with what we've seen from these two guys their last couple matches. And this is, you know, this is going to be interesting if Provo can put on a ride. Unger, he can be tough on top, so this will. This will kind of set the stage for the rest of the match here as Unger goes underneath to start the second period. Lining up on that right side as Provo stops the initial movement, chopping on that right arm of Unger. Unger keeping that knee under him. Now a head lever on that right side for Nico Provo. Good pressure there. He's got that shoulder glued. And Unger Trying to build up, nothing doing at this point, but he is fighting his right wrist up. But that tight waist, you see it with that left mm -hmm. hand from Provo, making matters a little tough. Now a little knee slide from Unger in a little better position. He's got hand control, but working for that tilt. Good recovery there by Nico Provo as he's got 42 seconds of riding time just like that. And it's gonna continue to climb as he's got that figure four. That's another obstacle. Now the ankle's trapped. Some really tough top wrestling from Nico Provo so far. Nothing close to a turn, but now back to that head lever. Now over a minute of riding time for Provo. Yeah, great job from Provo here. Really committing to the ride. Minute 20 riding time now, but Unger is able to break away. So that escape comes with just 40 seconds to go in the second period. So a minute 20 riding time for Provo. So we're gonna see, a, as a stalemate gets called, you gotta assume to start that third period, mm -hmm. Provo ultra incentivized to escape in that first 20 seconds right. as we continue the last 25 here in the second. Yeah, and in this low scoring match, uh, minute 20 riding time really puts Provo in a good position, not only to have that riding time, but also, man, the ride he put on, wearing Unger down, making him work from bottom, that's, that's big. And Unger hanging on that knee there. Would like to dart in on the leg, but he's not gonna be able to do so. And we're gonna go to the third, 1-0 in favor of Unger, but that riding time looms large, and Unger knows Escape is fine, but you got to ride for 21 seconds. Yeah, and he can do it. He, he's got some skilled top work, but man, the incentive to give up, get up, you're going to see Provo really fire up here. And great timing on that start from mm -hmm. Unger. Was able to kind of roll right to that chop left side, but he's out. Wow. Gets the escape. Just six seconds, 114 a riding time. And Chris Ayer says, good job to the table for getting the escape. And maintaining riding time for Provo. So he's got the advantage right now. And so Unger's got a couple options. He can get a takedown, obviously, or he's got to work really hard for two stall calls. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure which is more realistic at this point because neither have had much activity on their feet. Yeah, minute 15 to go here. Provo doing a good job, staying in the middle of the mat, hand fighting, holding good position. Double the single from Provo, comes up over under. And for Unger, you want to clear out of this tie. Provo's more than happy to probably hang there in a 50-50 position. They break, less than a minute to go. This is, where, time, yeah. this is where Unger's got to start to put one, two, three attacks together, and we haven't seen it from him yet. He's got to start his sprint here now. And, that, and that's a credit to Provo. He, he's really low to the ground. He's holding great position, and without a lot of motion, you're not going to have many openings if you're Unger. 30 seconds to go. High crotch attempt there, but Provo able to step out of it and square. 27 seconds to go, no warnings at this point. Provo in the driver's seat to take this one with riding time, as that point is nearly locked. There's nice. a double leg from Provo. Now we're scrambling the last 17 seconds. Head outside position for Provo. This is Unger's opportunity. He's got to counter score this. He's got 10 seconds to do it. 
Provo gonna probably try to just hang on to this leg the final six seconds. Trying to pass right now is Unger. And it's Provo that's gonna be able to get the finish. Adding three more is. at the buzzer. Takedown for Nico Provo who points back to his corner. He takes home the title here at CKLV. What a tournament for Nico Provo. Four straight ranked wins over really good opponents. And man, he puts his name on the map at 125. He looked at us and held up the number one, Kozak. He knows where he wants to be ranked. I don't know if he's at that point yet, but what a performance for Nico Provo. Man, he's got a case for it. You know, we look at this tournament. This is almost like a mini NCAA tournament. And he comes in. Who's picking Nico Provo to win? Nobody. And he takes it. Maybe a, maybe a couple wrestlers and coaches in Palo Alto. But other than that. And here we see that final position there. You know, Unger's not in a bad spot. Provo extended but builds up. And doesn't just look to hold on. And he ends up getting this takedown. Great job recovering that right leg. Keeping that. And then he's able to double off at the end. And you see a fired up Chris Ayers and Ryan Deacon. And Stanford has had, it's not just Provo. Stanford has had a tournament. Yeah. Man, yeah, you, you look up and down their lineup, starting with Provo, you know, as the guy who's kind of getting everything kick-started for him. But you had Lorenzo Norman taking out Shane Griffith. A really good tournament for Stanford. And uh, of note, we've got... Uh, Third place matches are going on on the other mat. You can check those out. It's Caleb Smith taking on Brandon Kaler right now. We're going to be back with 133 right after this. three pound finals as we just saw in third place match Caleb Smith bringing home that third place trophy at 125 that was the delay they're gonna hold matches so we're gonna hit the 33 it's gonna be NC State's Kyle Rini taking on Evan Frost of Iowa State the freshman Kozak yeah Evan Frost been really impressive this tournament uh, he's shown his you know, scrambling ability his top ability but it's a whole Whole nother world here with Kai Arini, All-American, number five from NC State. And it's Frost in the maroon with yellow trim of Iowa State. Arini, an All-American last year for the Wolfpack in the red singlet, red ankle bands. To tell you how crazy this tournament is, is Evan Frost didn't wrestle a ranked or seated wrestler to make his way to the finals. Wow. Yeah, a bunch like of upsets. Blown up all the way. Collar and inside. 
for Evan Frost. Arini really fun. He's got good upper body attacks. Really good athlete, good movement. Can wrestle from everywhere. Has some big wins in his career. Frost had the biggest win of his career last week in the Cyhawk duel against Brody Teske. Really announced himself and he's followed it up with a really strong performance here. Yeah, it was in that duel against Teske. You really saw, number one, his leg defense, and then two, his oh, top nice ability. Nice shot here by Kyorini from head outside, switches head inside. Now a wizard here from Frost is Kai gonna try to work backside finish here and maybe come to his feet. Gotta navigate this wizard. As you see, Frost also really fighting yep. hands well, making matters a little bit difficult. See if Kai can get above the knee. Slowly improving his position as he'd like to step behind that foot of Frost, but you're seeing Frost putting that foot right on top of his, making matters difficult. Now standing, seeing a little better opportunity for Kai. Minute 12 to go, plenty of time to work here as he's gonna try to pull that foot out and he does. Now he's got it towards his armpit and the uh, NC State coaching staff wants him to pull back to center and he obliges, but still Frost showing great flexibility and fight from the standing position. And he drops wow, down and loses the look foot. look at that. Great defense from Frost. And that's what we're talking about there. You know, you can get into his legs, but he just makes it so tricky in finishing. And one of the things you notice is he fights hands the whole time he's also defending that leg. So we're back neutral, no score. For Kai. He, he's probably gotta be thinking, all right, I may take a couple cracks before I get the finish on this guy. But he's felt his defense that first time. The question will be, will Frost be able to generate and score on Orini? Right. A little more action this period than our last first period, and it, but we're still gonna go to the second period scoreless. Yeah, really just that one exchange mm -hmm. where Orini gets in on the legs and Frost just, man, defended for, felt like a minute, <laughs> a long time. And this is also key in our team race. Iowa State currently holding that first place team standing by eight points over Nebraska. Win here would go a long way for the Cyclones, but right now Frost going to start the second period underneath. Orini does not want to give this up. Goes elbow deep on that return and gonna drive him off the mat out of bounds. Back to center we go. Minute 47 remaining here in this second period. Minute 47 to go. Kai Arini lines up on that left side. Quick stand up, nice return there. Oh, one count. Two. And they're giving swipes. Two counts now. It's gonna be interesting because the bottom wrestler is allowed to roll and you've really got to hold him there kind of beyond reaction time. But if Iowa State doesn't challenge. No challenge. There's, you can't complain about it. And it may, are they going to talk about it? No. Nope. It's going to stand. No challenge. They're not going to look at it. So 2-0 after Areen catches him for near fall. And he's in kind of like a elevator position as Frost, and now it's more swipes coming. And he's got him on his back on the edge. Four near fall coming. Both turns coming kind of off of Frost's mm -hmm. escape attempt from standing, and Frost getting a little too greedy, trying to go you yeah. know, from underneath to get near fall, not gonna be able to get it. And just like that, 6-0, wow. oh, Kai blows it wide open. Yeah, I noticed, I noticed there, right when he brought the leg up, NC State's corner yelled, to his back, to his back, and really in a position where it didn't look like he was, no. he was in a spot to, to put him there. So they must have saw something that Arini's really good in that position. And he's got that wrist here, does Arini see if he can roll through. Great mat wrestling here. And Kai Arini, and, and the mat wrestling is yeah. what you would maybe That's say, hey, this could be Frost's advantage, but no, it's Kai Arini who gets six near fall points, and now Frost, it's a long road back. 
against someone as good as Kai Orini. High crotch attempt there, but good defense, nice sprawl. And another attack from Kai Orini, and he's gonna add three more, 9-1 the lead. Up to their feet, again they go. We're being told that Iowa State no, no longer has a challenge left from this tournament. Oh, so wow. Used not, an ball. not an option for them. So that makes sense why we didn't see a brick there. Mm -hmm. And a ride out coming here for Kai Rini. Great second period after yeah. we go scoreless after one, nine points. Kai's choice, and he's like, do I really want to go under? Uh, okay, Here's I will. the replay where Orini had that foot up in the air and took him right to his back for the four near fall. Orini going to go under. You could tell he sort of deliberated, but winds up going, choosing the bottom position, going to try to add a point. He tripods, he's reaching back and escapes. 10-1, well beyond major decision territory now. So Frost's gonna have to attack and attack a lot to find his way back into this match. With riding time down potentially 10 points. Underhook on that right side for Frost. He's got his hips in. Trying to throw it by, drops down to the foot. This is a good position for Frost. We'll see if Arini can defend it all the way. Frost trying to free that arm and not gonna be able to execute a score there, a minute 12 to go here in the third. Nice shot, high crotch here on the edge. Battling the defense of Kai Arini, trying to work up the leg as Frost. Now treetops it, back trip, still nothing. Nice whizzer there from Kai Arini. 55 seconds to go here in regulation. Frost gonna try to get himself back into this match with a takedown. Yeah, he's got a long way to go and, you know, it's good to see him still fighting forward, looking for points. He gets this takedown, it'll be 10-4. Almost trips, still nothing, and that should be three, and there's the takedown, 10-4 on the scoreboard. And gotta figure they're gonna kick him. Going optional start here is Frost. It's 10-4 on the scoreboard, but 126 of riding time to Orini's credit. Yeah, he needs and he'll kid him. take down a near fall here. And they're gonna, they might wrestle seven minutes and 10 seconds of this one as the clock didn't start. So a stall warning. So everyone just, you know, kind of general grumbling right now. Metcalf's mad that the stall wasn't called right away. NC State, the clock wasn't started. Things happen and we're underway. Final 22 seconds. Over under position again. And Frost trying to find an opening. He's gotta go feet to back here and do it in a hurry, but just 10 seconds to go. Orini can use the edge to his advantage. He can give up some stalls. And they're gonna go out of bounds with three to go. And a high crotch at the end, but not gonna be enough. Kyle Rini, a 12-4 major decision win. The top seed runs the gauntlet. Something that was, that's been sort of rare here. The top seeds have yeah. been a little bit vulnerable, but yep. NC State's Kyle Rini with his signature. <laughs> I don't know what you call that. It's, that's his celebration. It sticks, yeah. the, sticks the tongue out, makes the crazy, crazy face. That's what we're here for. And we're here for crazy faces. Yeah, we're here for crazy <laughs> I, faces. Some for wrestling. Kozak's here for Kyle Reen's crazy faces. Oh, yeah. And, man, you look at the, the difference in that match, the second period. Yeah. You know, first period, scoreless. Third period, I mean, Frost wins it. But second period, Kyle Reen just shows the ability to get those back points, put up the, the big points against Evan Frost, and that's the difference. 
and I would I want to give credit to Arini for his, his top work, but a little bit of it was self-inflicted with Frost trying mm -hmm. to work too hard for some dynamic reversals, and Kai was able to fully take advantage of that. It's not your standard, you know, chop a guy, break him down, mm -hmm. turn him over. So we're going to be back with 141 right after this. All right, go time for 141 pounds in the gray of Ohio State. That's Jesse Mendez. He has been on fire, 100% bonus for this season. His opponent, member of the Wolfpack, Ryan Jack. He's in the red singlet, red ankle band. Yeah, Jesse Mendez has been really impressive this year, this tournament, just with his offensive ability and his ability on top to ride hard, get turns. But Ryan Jack, Maybe the premier win here at 141 over Lachlan McNeil, who was ranked number three coming into the tournament. Mendez's movement on his feet, his counter scores have been great. He generates a lot of offensive as well. Moving up from 133 pounds to 141, this weight class looks like a perfect fit for him. Mm -hmm. Yep, All-American last year at 133, looks even better at 141. And Jack, you know, he's looked like all-American cont contender every year, but yes. hasn't punched through just yet. No, he, he moved a 3-0 against Lachlan McNeil today, beating him yet again, the North Carolina All-American. There's a shot now looking for the ankle, but Jack does a great job of squaring up after it looked like Mendez may have had the angle. Now on the edge, it's gonna be really tough for Mendez to score this, and they're gonna stalemate it back to center. We go, a minute 35 remaining in the first period. We'll see if we have another scoreless first, Kozak. That's been the trend so far. And we've got blood on Ryan Jack's nose. They're gonna clean that up. Jay Jaggers, Logan Stever in the corner. For Jesse Mendez, it's like six NCAA titles there in your corner. Not bad. Not too bad. Add a world title there for, for Logan. And Ohio State now have put themselves in uh, second place. Nick Buzakis won his third place bout at 133. So Ohio State is seven points behind Iowa State. If Mendez gets a win here, I believe that'll give him four more points. Cleaned up is Ryan Jack and we're underway here for the last 90 seconds here, the first period. Both guys pawn at their opponent's head, trying to create that opening. There's a shot from Ryan Jack, looking to attack the right leg of Jesse Mendez. And another shot, this time he connects. He's almost doubled off, but nothing yet. Now transitioning to that wizard is Jesse Mendez, now standing single for Ryan Jack. As you see Mendez scooting towards that boundary and he's wow. able to free his leg and now it's Ryan Jack who may need to worry about the, giving up a score. And they're going towards the boundary and now sliding off completely is Jesse Mendez. The foot hits off the mat and they go back to center. Really strong attack there from Ryan Jack. He, he fired it once, missed, fired it again and was nearly finished. I bet he finishes that against most wrestlers in the country, but not Jesse Mendez. He's able to find a way out of it and nearly nearly counter scores. Yeah, 
Jack had put Mendez's hips down on the mat just for a moment. Mendez able to chest wrap, get those out. But man, that was a fun little uh, sequence there. 22 to go. Pressure and forwards, Jesse Mendez. And not giving them any room to breathe is Jesse Mendez. Jack drops down on the edge, and the first period is going to come to an end scoreless. And they're going to hit Jack for stalling. Wow. And, you know, Jack kind of floating to the edge there and getting shot off resulted in a stall warning against Ryan Jack. So Jack gonna go underneath, and as you mentioned, Kozak, the top work from Mendez has stood out as a real position of advantage. We'll see what he can do against someone talented like Ryan Jack, guy that does not give up a ton of near fall. Yeah, Mendez looks to attack a bar left side. And really work from there. It looks like a claw on that mm -hmm. right side for Mendez. Now he goes figure four, leg ride. Yeah, he's been doing that figure four, leg in on the right, and then looking for the bar on the left. Kind of reminds you how Dayton mm -hmm. Fix sets, sets up his trap arm gut. Yep. But for Jesse, it's how he sets up some of his folk style turns. He's trying to get that wrist. Leg comes out for Jack, so that aspect of the problem been solved, but now it's the wrist, and you mentioned the wrist on that left side. He's looked like Mendez was trying to put that wrist on the back. Jack fighting hands hard. Nearly up and out, wow, great work from Ryan Jack. 56 seconds of riding time. Yeah, it looked like Mendez was getting to work on top, but Jack did a good job as soon as he got that Wrist control, hand control on the left side was able to clear out and get the escape. So a 1-0 lead for Ryan Jack. Riding time not a factor. Is Jack able to escape in less than a minute? Could be key. And that stall call could back yes. come, come back to haunt Jack here. Elbow control on that left side for Jesse Mendez. Is there ear to ear? Tough to score from that position. Jack would do well to circle back in and not hang on the edge. He fires off a shot, re-attack Jesse Mendez, but the hand is on the carpet. They're gonna go off the mat, out of bounds. And they're gonna go action call on the edge. Just six to go here in the second period. Pretty tight match. Taking a look here at this escape as we head to the third. There it is, you see, cleared those hands, got wrist control and was able to clear out. And now Mendez going underneath to start the third. And now up to his feet and return back down is Jesse Mendez. He's got to get his escape now and he will. No issue there. 1-1 one, one on the scoreboard. Riding time, not a factor. Going to settle this one on our feet. And Jack needs to be aware. Staying in the center of the mat, circling back in with that stall call looming. And if Mendez pressured a little more, he might be able to earn that call. You see him getting some stutter fakes and some motion going. But it's Jack that fires, and oh, it's the reattack of Jesse Mendez. He has been having so much success with that. He's close to the three. Can he get it? Stepping behind, and there it is. Take down Jesse Mendez. It's four to one. And he's only got to ride for 10 seconds to get that riding time up over one minute. And great forward pressure here from Mendez as he completely flattens out Ryan Jack. And Jack, I think, kind of sensing the pressure mm -hmm. coming from Mendez. Felt like he needed to... Change his level and fire, and that went right into Mendez's wheelhouse. Beautiful re-attack to that left side, gets the finish, and now he's in the driver's seat to win this match. Double legs in. And the NC State corner 
trying to work this ref and convince him that Jesse's not working for a turn, just working to ride right now. And they're gonna stalemate it. They're gonna give Jack a restart. So for Jack, it's, it's simple. You gotta get an escape and a takedown here. Escape and a takedown, here. yep. 28 seconds to go. And Jay Jaggers just said, be risky with your ride or reversal doesn't kill you. So they wanna see him work as hard as he can to finish this match on top. But there's the escape, 18 seconds to go. An escape and ride out would send this into overtime for Ryan Jack, but he's got 12 seconds to do it. He's gotta start firing as Mendez can play the edge. There's a shot. Mendez able to square up. Now he's looking to counter score. He'll circle back up to the center. And that's gonna do it with riding time, Jesse Mendez, a 5-2 winner. Yeah, it's so impressive from Jesse Mendez this whole weekend, and especially that match. Really managed it well, gets the lone takedown and comes out the 5-2 winner. Jesse Mendez is a title contender at 141 pounds. There's, there's no question about it. You know, Real Woods is here. He's the he's the favorite until proven otherwise, but that's a match I can't wait to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and here you see the re-attack from Jesse Mendez as he holds on to that right ankle and able to go get behind for that takedown. There you see, man, just the physicality that Mendez presented there in that moment, but it was the movement from Mendez that set that up. Coming up next, 149 pounds. We're gonna have number one, Rich Lovett, taking on number four, Caleb Henson. Kozak, this was the match you were most excited for yep. in the first group of five. Why? Man, been so impressed with Caleb Henson this year. He looks like he's taken just another step forward. He was already an All-American yep. last season, but looks to have gotten just a little bit better. But Ridge love it. He's right now in this weight, he's the final boss. He's ranked number one. And man, he's been so good this weekend, especially on top. Absolutely. Great top wrestler. That will be a big problem for Henson to solve as we are underway, 149 pound finals in the black for Virginia Tech, that's Caleb Henson. And in the white, number one, Ridge Lovett of Nebraska. Hard Ooh. club right then left from Caleb Henson. How you doing? Yeah, if uh, Ridge Lovett wasn't awake before that, He's he up is and now, now drops down to the leg. Caleb Henson in on a shot, now draped over. And this is another area of strength for Ridge Lovett. The counter score ability, the defense is next level. But Henson knows how to counter score himself. And now it's, look at this standing single from Ridge Lovett. He's got him treetop, but Henson finding his way towards the edge. Lovett working hard to pull him back into center. Henson trying to get himself out of bounds, and he's gonna do that. They get no warning there. Great opening shot from Henson, but a better counter from Lovett, but we're scoreless, first 45 seconds. Furious hand fight to get this started. Now it's Lovett kind of responding. It was Henson with the hard clubs, and now Lovett getting to some upper body positions. Yeah, getting to that right side underhook. Looks like he feels real comfortable there, and he's able to control the tie from that position. Over collar there for Ridge Lovett. 
Redshirted a year ago. In interviews mentioned, he knew where he needed to improve, knew he needed to add Ooh. this, leg attacks, and that was a beautiful one, and yeah. he's gonna get three. And now he's got this wrist looking for a turn, potentially, as Ridge Lovett. Beautiful little elbow control shot there from Ridge Lovett. He's got this wrist. This is big trouble for Caleb Henson. And getting the count, there's in. one swipe, but they're gonna one go off the mat. swipe off the mat, wow. So takedown for Lovett and almost gets the turn. And this is the test here for Henson. Yeah. Not to get caught with those wrists again because we've seen how dangerous Lovett can be. Lovett gathers himself, lines up on that right side. Quick stand up. Henson hustling hard. He knows. Anytime he's underneath Ridge Lovett, he is in danger. And right now, a breakdown for Ridge Lovett, not what he needed. And he goes to that figure four ride where he's so dangerous as well. This is just what the doctor ordered for Ridge Lovett. Great start here, gets the takedown. Riding time now approaching 40 seconds. As he may be looking for a cross-face cradle. Great pressure here as Henson takes that arm out. Trying to build up, and just as he does, the other leg comes in. And he's gonna pull those wrists out and break him down completely. Fantastic top work from Ridge Lovett. Showing you why he's the number one ranked wrestler in America. An NCAA finalist. Two years ago, falling to Yanni Dakama Hollis, a four-time NCAA champion. Now he's trying to be an NCAA champion himself. And he's looking the part after that first period. 3-0 lead for Rich Lovett. 125, a riding time to his credit. Yeah, the end of the period, definitely Caleb Henson's friend there. Kind of gets to regroup. And now Lovett's going underneath to start the second. Lovett gets set. Henson lines up on that left side, and we're underway here in the second. And now Henson likes to go to this Navy. Nearly got near fall in his semifinal match. Goes right back to it. Kind of unconventional. You don't see a lot of those for returns, but Henson likes to do it. Tripoding up now is Ridge Lovett. Yeah, good job from Caleb Henson here, committing to the ride for a little bit, eating down that riding time below one minute. And it's now under a minute 55 and going down. And there's the escape. 4-0 the lead for Ridge Lovett. No more riding time. Hard bap from Caleb Henson. He's gonna stay physical and gonna keep coming for seven minutes. Vicious hand fighter from the true sophomore from Georgia. But Ridge Lovett, ready for everything so far, but he throws it by just as I say that, nothing yet. And oh, look wow. at the escape ability of Ridge Lovett. Henson's had him close to score twice now, and Lovett able to find his way out of it. And that was his closest opportunity yet. Mm -hmm. Forty seconds to go. Henson knows it's probably gonna take multiple attacks to get himself back in this match. And you have to assume Henson's gonna take neutral in the third. Yeah, I can't go underneath, especially with what you felt in that first period and with riding time already at 50 seconds. And there's another shot. This Can would be he big, finish? this Doubles would be big, up. and he gets it. Can he get the ride out here? Ride Ten out seconds is to huge. go. And he's Drop down to the leg, the count stopped, but he's let go of it, three seconds to go. And four, three, wow. into the third. Now you think about going underneath, right? I don't think so. It's the last thing I think about. Four to three. Because you, uh, if you're if you're Henson, you're probably also thinking you maybe know, Pace is on my side too. Yeah, and you know you, you still need a takedown even if the score is tied. Exactly. And give yourself a little extra time to work for it. 
So 4-3 on the scoreboard. Riding time, not a factor here. And that's how you have to finish on Ridge Love it. It's got to be fast. You got to get to that second leg immediately. Another shot here. But they're going to go off the mat, out of bounds. But they're going to go action, action call, call. No stalling. Two on one there, now cleared out from Henson. He snaps. Minute 25 to go. Lovett's corner really wants him to close that gap, make things tight. And it does seem like Henson's having a little bit more success working from space with that hand fighting. And there's another shot. And I think we'll see a warning there. And yes, we will. I mean, the, the reality is when, when you float to the edge, if you get shot off, they're probably going to warn you there, mm -hmm. and that's what happened. You got to keep yourself in the center of the mass. That's just a warning, though. One more would be a point and would tie it. Yeah, and there's a minute left, so Henson has time to work for that. Lovett needs to be careful. He needs to try to work in bounce when he can. And, and hit, Lovett shoots, and now oh, wow. re attack here from Caleb Henson. He's up, standing single, but switching that head to the inside is Ridge Lovett. Henson gonna try to find that far leg. The clock not on Henson's side. He's got plenty of time for it, but this is eating up some clock if he doesn't get this finish. Now draping is Ridge Lovett. He's really strong for this position. We saw that in the first period, 26 seconds to go. This is a huge scramble. Now they're gonna go out of bounds, 22 seconds. Last 22 seconds, he was close there. And we've got blood. Whew. And that could have been it for, for Henson with just 22 seconds now. Lovett did a really good job getting to the position where he was strong in to defend from. If you're Ridge Lovett, you can't think, oh, I just need to not get taken down. You've got to stay engaged yeah, enough that you don't give up that's what, true. that second warning. So there's a lot of opportunity here for Henson and for Lovett. If he stays engaged, if he could find his way to a leg somehow, he'd be yep. in great shape. We got, a, we got a guy on the mat still. <laughs> 17 seconds. He's in deep. Caleb Henson wow. finds the shot. Same shot, but this time Lovett's able to find the leg. Stepping over is Caleb Henson, who with the danger zone should start. Two, one more. Wow. I thought that was a little late with the count, but great They're job by challenge. Ridge Lovett. They're challenge Here this. comes the brick, and he's going to kick his face at the end. And Rich Rich says, says, hey, we're Coach good. Manning, we're fine. No and they're gonna challenge it. And they get a nice little friendly handshake. And Brian Snyder not, not too thrilled with the late match tactics there from Henson. They're gonna look at it. And I think this is this is a smart challenge from Tech. I don't know what they're gonna determine. Yeah, you feel it, like it looked like the, the count started late, but that doesn't mean it's enough to get to that third. Yeah. What and part of it is you feel like you know if you if you don't call if you don't call that danger, then Lovett has no reason to get off the exactly off of his back. So right here on his back there, that's 90. But the count doesn't start till right He's here. Way late. That's way late. But I don't know that it's three. I know the the count started coming well after. Yeah, I mean, regardless, incredible match, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I look, that's that was wrestled like an NCAA final level mm -hmm. match where you saw both guys, what makes them extremely elite. The top wrestling from Ridge Lovett, the counter scoring, yeah. beautiful duck under. Yeah. yeah, and really you saw, you know, kind of change in tactics as the match progressed. You saw, you know, Lovett gets that early takedown, early ride. Looks like he's in control, and then Henson kind of figures out a way to come back in and Lovett. You know, does shows off his craftiness, shows off his you know, just veteran wrestling. I think Call's going to stand. And so that's going to do it. Ridge Lovett, your champion here, great four match three winner, great match. He maintains his number one ranking. Yep. And the Huskers extend their lead. Yeah, really good match from Ridge Lovett. You know, you see why he's the number one ranked wrestler in the country. You see why he is 
uh, a contender to win an NCAA title this year. Really impressive from him. Here you see his boot scoot takedown. So smooth, so nice. And that takedown and then the subsequent ride he was able to put on, who there it is again, is what put him in the driver's seat in this match. Great match here and I cannot wait for this 157 pound final. It's coming up next, Peyton Roberts, Ja'Cory Teamer after this. Him and Van, those, those two and Van Ness, I think, have separated. Those are the, those are the three, yeah, for sure. And if you're Henson, it's like, man, you're, you're right there. How many different, that one on the edge, he was so close with that single. I can't wait for 57. Peyton Roberts, Ja'Cory Teamer. Rematch from 2022 NCAA's third place match where these two both emptied the tank. The iconic picture of them both laying yeah. on their backs at the end of the match, shaking hands, exhausted from an incredible bout. And now it's time for the rematch. Peyton Rob in the white for Nebraska and in the yellow and maroon of Arizona State. That's Ja'Cory Teamer. Ja'Cory. Missed last year with injury. He's been back and he's looked fantastic so far this season, as has Peyton Robb. A nice low attack from Peyton Robb. And then wow, counter score wow. from Ja'Cory Teamer. He's gonna get the takedown. Beautiful trip. Man, and that's what makes him so dangerous. You, you think you're in, you think you're in a good spot, nope. and boom, strikes for that counter takedown. His hips, his feel. There's nothing really like it in NCAA wrestling or this weight class. And there's a nice single leg for Ja'Cory. Now looking to counter score himself is Peyton Robb. And he's kind of just hanging on this single. Not working for that finish. And they'll go back up 209 to go in the first period as Ja'Cory Teamer jump starts the scoring here in the first minute. You referenced how good Rob looked this mm -hmm. season. He today beat Will Luan eight to two. Also has win over Cal Swenson, who's really tough, top 15 ranked guy, 10 to nothing. Rob's been dominant. Stepping around is Jacory. They're gonna go out of bounds, but not before Peyton Rob gets the takedown. Jacory went for it and paid the price, but it was the double underhooks from Peyton Rob that put Jacory in a really tough position. And Ja'Cory went for it, as he's wont to do. But Peyton was ready, and he's gonna get the takedown. 4-3 the lead, minute 38 to go. What a start to this first period, John. Yeah, we're only a minute 22 in. <laughs> the, uh, man, the four, those first three matches, 0-0. Zero, zero. Mm -hmm. This one is a, is a different story. Yeah, the Cornhuskers jump starting the offense in the first period. It was Lovett against Henson. Now mm -hmm. Peyton Robb. And now for Jacory getting an escape here is so essential. You don't want to get ridden out or ridden for an extended period of time here in this period. You'd like to go get to that second period all square at worst. 
But Peyton going to work really hard. You know, Rob was the number one guy in America going into conference weekend. Lost a tight one to Levi Haynes before placing last year at 157. But ended up hospitalized after NCAAs with a yeah. flesh-eating bacteria. But he, now he's back on the mat, fully I know. recovered. And you know, unfortunately, you see some of those pictures floating around. It's like, how in the world is this guy wrestling at this ability after going through something like that? And it is just, he's so impressive, regardless of going through that. And then you put that in, and it's like, wow, this is this is amazing. He, he looks as good as he's, as he's ever wrestled. Looks yeah. like no impact from, from, the, uh, from the injury. Ja'Cory Tamer similarly looks really good after having season-ending surgery last year. 4-3 now, still the lead for Peyton Robb, who now has a minute seven of riding time. This is not what you wanted to have happen if you're Ja'Cory Teamer. Does this give you pause going under Peyton Robb in the second or third? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, you, you think about, you think about being held down, number one, just building riding time, building riding time, but then also wearing you down, wearing you down. Ja'Cory Teamer's best on his feet. That's where he needs to be. Roll from Ja'Cory, but ends up in that crab ride of, of Peyton Robb. Just three seconds to go. So the takedown and ride out for Peyton Robb going to give him a 4-3 lead going into the second period. We'll take a look at that double underhook throw. And Robb going to go underneath. Boom, just Ooh. plants him straight down. He was ready for that one. He said, Coach Paulson, you probably like that one. Pinnacle Wrestling Club. They know how to wrestle upper body, and now we're going to go to the second period. Jacory's just going to kick him. Gives up the escape. 5-3 Peyton Robb, plus his minute 34 riding time. Look at Robb just coming forward. And Teamer will seed some ground and seed some ground, and then eventually he can strike as the headgear ends up on his face. Rob marches forward. Another shot attempt. Nebraska corner really looking for stalling to be called against Teamer. Teamer will give up ground. He he doesn't really care much about that. He kind of wants you to come forward. And we'll see. Rob can really just pressure and fake. He doesn't have to necessarily pull the trigger to, to earn a warning, given how Jacory's just floating so mm -hmm. much away from him. Ja'Cory centers back up. Underhook on that right side. And now marches Ja'Cory towards the boundary and he circles back in, but not before they give him a stall warning. Zeke Jones doesn't like it, but the way he floated to the edge, you can understand why the official mm -hmm. raised his fist in the air. Just a warning, not a point at this juncture. 47 seconds to go here in the second. And Ja'Cory could do well for himself to fire a little bit. Let, it, let the ref know, hey, I'm still here. I'm still working to score. Wrist control on that right side for Peyton Robbins. He's going to shoot off the mat. Wizard seatbelt position here for Peyton Robb as he steps around that foot. We'll see if he drops down to the leg. Now he's going to crank on that arm. 10 seconds to go. Now body lock, but good hips from Ja'Cory Teamer. They're going to go out of bounds. They're going to go action call on that one. Seven seconds to go. You got to think Ja'Cory's going to choose neutral here in the third. Nope. No. And I kind of get it with riding time Already. almost assured. Actually, I don't know that I get it. Because <laughs> he's going to need a takedown regardless, so why yeah. risk? The time and the effort. And you've already seen the tough ride of Rob. So Rob lines up on that right side. Tripod here for Ja'Cory. And knee slide, knee slide here from Ja'Cory Teamer, but not able to come up to his feet yet. Trying to get hands. Back to 
now up to his feet and turning back into him, but a nice return from Peyton Robb. And they're gonna continue to let him wrestle on the edge here. Yeah, those toes are inbounds. And now, now they, they go. go out. Minute 17 to go, and they're already kind of seeing why you know, going under may be not advisable. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can think is, you know, if you're teamer, you get the escape, and then a takedown, then you're winning rather than working for the tie. Maybe he's thinking Peterson time, Kozak. He's hit it before. Those Long Island boys. They love it. Yeah. Long Beach, that's Peterson, capital of the world. Yeah, Dylan Palacio, now he's stepping behind. <laughs> he's good, look, he's looking for that wrist. Standing Peterson time. Yep, he's, he's looking for it, but not gonna get it. Minute two to go here in the third period. They come up on the edge and they go out of bounds, reaching back as Jacory into the table. 56 to go, riding time is locked, so that point is now coming. And we got a caution on Ja'Cory. Not really getting settled there. That's his second, I believe, because mm -hmm. he tried to jump the whistle earlier, so now he's got to get, he's got to really wait or he gives up another point. And clean start here in the third. Rob pulls that foot out. And looking to turn in is Jacor. He's got to try to make something happen, rolling around. He finds his way to the leg. This is potential opportunity here for Jacor. Nothing going yet. And they're going to stalemate it. 33 to go. Yeah, that was the rare moment where I believe both coaches corners were calling for a stalemate. Yeah. <laughs> Try potting up as Ja'Cory Teamer, Peyton Robb, happy to just kind of hang on that right side, knowing he's got riding time locked in, a two-point advantage beyond that, so it's a three-point lead now. Now, potential upper body activity here, but Rob clears out of it. 5-4 on the scoreboard, but Ja'Cory just has 12 seconds to work for a takedown. Can he get it? He's pressuring in, but Rob has stall calls to give. They're gonna go off the mat, out of bounds. Stall warning against Peyton Rob. Seven seconds, a takedown will do it for Teamer. Takedown wins this match. And Teamer gonna pursue stepping in there. Diving at the leg, but Rob gonna be able to sprawl on top and take home a title here in Vegas. Back-to-back -back champions for the Huskers. And Rob is fired up, look at that. That's gotta feel so good. Going through what he went through in the off season to, by December, you come here, you win a, you run an you win absolute the bracket. Gauntlet. The bracket of brackets, the one we highlighted as soon as we saw entries, we said 57 is the way to waits and Peyton Rob just won it. Yeah. And great job, you know, he gets, you know, he gets the takedown, gets, puts on a hard ride, and, you know, really proved there that he was the best wrestler here at 157 pounds this weekend. Here's that first takedown. Big body lock for Rob for three. See it one more time from another angle. Really it was Ja'Cory who initiated, yeah. and then just Good technique for Rob, lower his hips, drive through. 165, Julian Ramirez versus Isaac Olenek, right after this.
there, you're looking at the West Gate, the home for this year's CKLV. And we're getting ready to go here, 165 pounds. With one of the bigger surprise finalists, Julian Ramirez upsetting national champion David Carr to punch his ticket in the final. Meanwhile, Isaac Olenek continues to look fantastic, taking out Cam Amin in that semi as time was almost expired. Now you see Cam Amin is wrestling David Carr for third. We thought that was going to be the final. Yeah, and we were 10, 15 seconds away from having that yes. as the finalists. You know, yep. just remarkable semis. They almost happened simultaneous, those last second takedowns. Underway, 165 pounds in the red for Cornell. That's Julian Ramirez. And in the orange of Oklahoma State, Isaac Olenek. Olenek, number four, Ramirez, number seven for now. You expect both of these guys to move up in the rankings after this tournament. Julian Ramirez, always a threat to win big matches. Last year, he had two wins over NCAA finalist Quincy Monday. He's beaten NCAA champion Shane Griffith, and a, among other All-Americans. Once he gets that consistency, he's going to be really tough to beat at NCAAs. Isaac Olenek, a surprise NCAA All-American last year, now following it up with a really strong start to his final year. Match number three. Collar and elbow control for both guys, and then Ramirez clears out of it. Ramirez, great speed to the leg, good high crotch and single leg. Isaac, we saw his ankle pick on display at the All-Star Classic. It was a slide by yeah. against Cam Amin that was the deciding score there. Yeah, and you wonder if Olenek tries to get his offense going a little bit earlier this match. He really didn't take a committed attack against Amin until that final five, 10 seconds. Isaac. 90 seconds in, no score, no real committed attacks at this point. Snaps from Julian, another snap. You see Isaac faking to that right side. Sweep single from Ramirez, not there though. Good down block from Isaac Olenek. Yeah, probably a little too far away for that sweep single, especially with Olenek's length. Another good snap there from Ramirez. Slide by, almost had the angle, did Olenek. Pretty even so far. No one's been particularly more aggressive at this point. See if either guy pushes for a late period takedown. Those can be so big if you can go into the second period with a 3-0 lead. But another level change there from Ramirez, but not going to follow it up with an attack. And we're going to go into the second scoreless. No points, no warnings, all square as we head to the second. Olinick going to go under to start. Ramirez lines up on that left side, switches to the right side. Up to his feet already is Olenek. Wizard seatbelt position. And Ramirez got to work to return or let him go, and then he lets him go. 1-0 lead for Isaac Olenek. The Cowboy senior transferred from NIU last year to Oklahoma State. Ramirez continuing to look for that left-sided attack. Mm -hmm. But Olenek not giving many opportunities. There, he finds himself in on a low shot. Now trying to finish and looking to dive over the top is Julian Ramirez. Had the ankle for a moment and now 
collecting the other leg here is Isaac Olenek, but he's got his foot trapped, and that's going to prevent him from scooping that ankle. Ramirez in okay shape as long as he has his foot. Olenek going to continue to try to pry pressure back, maybe put in danger zone. Now turning in, now it's Ramirez in a decent spot here. It's just the wizard of Olenek to beat. Tries to put the boot in, nothing doing. Potential body lock position. Hard wizard down there from Isaac Olenek. 40 seconds to go. This is our best scoring opportunity we've had, and we're going to go stalemate with 39 to go in the second. Ramirez did a really good job holding on to that ankle the whole time, was able to come through, but Olenek's wizard is really tough to beat. We saw it against Hamity, and we saw it right there. Just because you get to that deep seatbelt doesn't mean you're in a great position to score against them. No doubt about that. Everyone in the country is now learning the same lesson about Isaac Olenek's wizard including now Julian Ramirez. Eight seconds to go here in the second period. And that's gonna do it. We'll head to the third. Quick second period is Ramirez now gonna go under. Well, Linux tough on top. Ramirez gonna have to be vigilant underneath. And a tripod up for Ramirez as he's trying to get the hands of Isaac Olenek. Olenek not wanting to give up this escape, committed to this ride, but now stepping around, looking for a Peterson himself maybe. No, ends up on the leg and now they clear out. Escape makes it 1-1. No riding time to speak of here. So likely settling this on our feet. And a good level change and a re-attack there by Olenek after the initial attack from Julian Ramirez. Over collar there. Now he fires off and it's a little pass by from Olenek. And they're gonna get the three. Takedown for Olenek. He's into the lead 4-1. And that pass by really put him in the position and then Ramirez looked like maybe last second Granby attempt. Linick in the driver's seat now, four to one. Now up to his feet is Julian Ramirez. He needs to escape and escape quickly, and he's gonna do it. Four two on the scoreboard, Olenek with a two point lead. Ramirez needs a takedown, simple as that. The level changes are creating some opportunities, but he's not being able to follow it up with a deep leg attack yet. Good snaps, trying to find his way to the leg. Good defense so far from Isaac Olenek. Oh, he's got in the on leg. the single, yeah, he's in, oh, but Olenek's gonna put his foot on the carpet, and that's gonna get it blown dead out of bounds. 18 seconds, one last shot for Julian Ramirez. He was able to do it against Carr. Can he do it today against Olenek? They're gonna warn him for stalling, inconsequential. 10 seconds to go, another level change from Julian Ramirez. Olenek wisely gonna hang there on the edge. And the Cowboys have a champion here in Vegas, Isaac Olenek. <laughs> he shrugs, says, I'm that guy. Champ at 165 pounds, Isaac Olenek. And it was that pass by again, he got it against the mean. He was able to convert for the only takedown of the match here against Julian Ramirez. Great performance from Olenek. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this, this bracket was loaded. You had David Carr, you had Cam Amin, you had Julian, and a host of others. So we're moving through these final six down, four to go, John. We're Man. looking at 174 coming up next. And they have lived up to the hype. Four more to go. Can't imagine them outmatching what we've seen so far, but we've got some good matches coming up. Can't rule it out. Coming up next, 174 pounds when we return.
Kate DeVos, South Dakota State, taking on Oregon State's Travis Whitlake. DeVos had a great win over Ohio State's Carson Hartschla. Some clutch takedowns in that one separated him from the Ohio State All-American. Meanwhile, Travis Whitlake done a great job making it to this point. Taking out very tough Danny Wask, who kind of announced himself this weekend at 174 pounds from Naval Academy. Yeah, you know, Whitlake was in a tough match against Adam Kemp in the quarters as well. Needed a late takedown. And, and really, all the way back to his first match, Travis Whitlake had to ride out to win his first match. He needed a, a stall call. He was down and then a ride out to win. Whitlake has been able to win really close matches this whole tournament. And I have to assume it's going to be similar here. DeVos is not an easy guy to blow out. He's really tough. He can wrestle from everywhere. And we're underway 174. K. DeVos in the blue, South Dakota State, taking on Oregon State's Travis Whitlake in the orange. Yeah, Whitlake transferring from Oklahoma State, where he was an All-American back in 2021, down at 165. Went up it to 184 last year. And now he's at 174 for Oregon State. So collar tie from DeVos. From right to left, now cleared out. Both guys rock solid, really good from everywhere. A little bit of a length advantage for DeVos, low range here at 174. Mm -hmm. And there you see Whitlake drop into that collar and ankle. His ankle picks are probably his best leg attack. Yeah, you mentioned the, the size, the length of DeVos. Believe it or not, he wrestled 157 in 2021. Uh, now up at 174. I talked to him last year after he won the Southern Scuffle. He says, man, or two years ago after he won the Southern Scuffle, it feels so good to be up at his natural weight class. He was rounded 12 last year, clearly All-American contender this year. Whitlake right now is really dictating where the match is taking place. He's been lower, driving forward. He's thrown a lot more fakes. It's not outright attack onslaught type of thing, but he's doing a little bit more. Yeah, but, you know, saying that, we saw... There's a shot. Now looking to counter. Oh, look, look at, at DeVos on that re-attack. That is textbook, mm -hmm. and he's up 3-0. I was gonna say, we saw similar things against Harchla. Harchla, you know, took a lead in that match, got a late takedown in the first, but then DeVos just kind of slow and steady, worked his way back in, and kind of built as the match went on. His re-attacks were the difference in that match, and there you see one here. And now Whitlake doing a good job. He's working for a reversal. He's gonna get it, 3-2 the score. DeVos gonna sit out and try to get an escape point and get his lead to two. But right now, 3-2, an opportunity to ride out here for Travis Whitlake. Let's see if he can do it. It's, he's gonna need a breakdown here. And there's an escape, 4-2 the score. Whitlake not gonna stop pursuing that takedown, though. Chris Pendleton in the corner for Whitlake who returned home. He's from Oregon originally. Now for his final year, gonna wrestle, represent his home state. Damian Hahn, Cam Simaz in the corner for Cade DeVos. And that's it, period number one's over. 4-2 for DeVos as we head to the second. Flip goes red for Whitlake. He's gonna go underneath.
last time around. Whitlake was able to get a reversal. We'll see what tactics DeVos may adjust. Yeah, he gets a little close to a breakdown, but good job keeping your knees under you by Travis Whitlake. Claw on that right side. As he's taken out that foot. And a count starts as he drops down below the waist. And another return here. Now really good ride from Cade DeVos. His riding time now 26 and climbing in his favor. He's got a two point lead as is. And now for Whitlake. This riding time could potentially be another obstacle for him. He's got that ankle trapped momentarily. Now let's go of it. Yeah, DeVos doing a good job riding, but not really getting close to a turn. And drops we, down to that leg, and they're going to go out of bounds. We do have our, you know, the new rules this year. Top man's supposed to be working for that turn. So you wonder if this type of ride continues, if he is uh, going to get dinged for stalling at all. And there's an escape. Nice roll, and he gets away. 4-3 now the score. Only 56 seconds of riding time, so great timing on that escape by Whitlake. But for him, it's neutral where he's got the most ground to gain. He's had a hard time finding some offense against Cade DeVos. Getting his hands moving as DeVos fires off a double, shoots him off the mat out of bounds. We're gonna get an action call as they head back to center, 31 to go in the second. And we're gonna have a little blood time. Yeah, I saw one of the <clears throat> DeVos's matches earlier. Uh, before the match even started, the trainer came over and said, hey, where do you want this? And it was a nose plug. And he said, here, put it right, right up here. Before the match even started. So got to imagine, uh, may have entered the tournament maybe with a broken nose or something where he knew Hey, isn't this nose is going to bleed. You don't see that too often. Not too often. <laughs> I feel like Jason Nolf was one of those guys that always had a, a bloody nose as well. Yeah. All right, we're underway here. 4-3. DeVos in the lead. And picking up his hand fight a little bit, but as I say that, it's DeVos that fires off a left side high crotch, doubles off, and gets the finish. 7-3 lead for Kate DeVos. Riding time now over a minute in his favor. Great attack there. And it's that's the continuing the trend. Mm -hmm. It's all with like he's forward, he's pressuring, he's level changing, level changing. But when DeVos goes, he scores. He's two for two. Yeah, and here we'll see it now. Whitlake coming forward, catches that left leg of Whitlake as he's moving forward and finishes quick. So seven to three now, DeVos gonna go underneath to start the third. Josh Roden says, give me that wrist. They wanna see him work on top, try to get a tilt going. DeVos already Approaching an escape as he's nearly up to his feet. Now back down. Hand control there for DeVos. He's in good shape for an escape. And there it is, 8-3. Riding time eliminated. Only at 56 for DeVos. It's gonna need, Whitley gonna need a couple takedowns here. Yeah, two takedowns and a ride out will tie it up for Whitley. He finds that ankle, nice shot, switches to the other leg. Diving over is DeVos, trying to come out the back door is Travis Whitlake. He needs to try to secure that other leg as well if he wants to get this finish. But it looks like DeVos has the ankle, slowing things down a little bit, but Whitlake's still in position to score this. Minute nine to go. Still a lot of time in this match. This oh, score will go a long way. There's a takedown. Going to make it 8-6. Whitlake's got to kick him right away, and he does. 9-6 the score, so a takedown ride out is what Whitlake's going to need to force overtime. And if you're Whitlake, you almost don't want to get the takedown too soon, mm -hmm. right? Kind of want to wait, maybe fire 30, 20 seconds left in the match. Shot from DeVos, not in deep. Whitlake in a transition to a front headlock with 40 seconds to go. He grabs that wrist. This could be tough to score on the edge. Whitlake should get a restart, and he does. 33 to go. 
And as you said, you don't want to get the takedown too soon, but beggars can't be choosers. If you can get a takedown, you got to get it because just 30 seconds to go now. Yeah. Now's the time. This is when you sprint to the finish here if you're with Lake. No warnings, and as I say that, the stall fist raised in the air against DeVos, but he's got a couple he could give up before that becomes an issue. Whitlake hand fighting hard as he has the entire match. He could back out. I think they can give him stall. that one. Yeah. I think that's justified. So now a takedown wins it. Whitlake in a sprint. He's just got seven seconds to do it. Back it up right towards the zone. One way, then the other, but finds his way to the leg with just one second to go. That's probably going to do it here for Kay DeVos. Three seconds to go. Excuse me, they add a couple. And they're saying there's 2.5 on the clock. It reads three. And close, but no cigar. Kate DeVos, your winner, 7 9. Yeah. Great match. Whitlake was coming hard at the end. But DeVos's two takedowns were the difference here. Yeah, great tournament from Kate DeVos. Those last two matches especially, winning over Harshla, winning over a really tough Whitlake. Cade DeVos announcing himself as a legitimate contender here. He's going to move up the rankings, and he's going to be on the 174-pound radar here. And there you see really nice reattack for Cade DeVos. Goes high and low. And then here it is again, gets to that left leg, finishes quick. And that was the difference for Kate DeVos on the feet, wins that takedown battle. He's a champ at 174. When we come back, 184 pounds. Here's, we're going to have Parker Keckheisen taking on Will Feldkamp. State of Iowa, well represented in this bout. Panther train, Cyclones, going to collide. And Parker Keckheisen has been so impressive, not just this tournament, but this year. Had a really impressive win over Bernie Truax, who was ranked number two at the time at the All-Star Classic. Had to dig deep there and get a late takedown to take that win. And now here we go, 184 pounds. Number one, Parker Keckheisen taking on Will Feldkamp of Iowa State. Parker Keckheisen in the purple of UNI. Feldkamp in the red for Iowa State. And it's a real contrast of styles, as most matches with Will Feldkamp are. He's very unconventional. And there's a single leg from Parker Kekheis, and he didn't have his other hand, though. Feldkamp pulled it off, and it's hard to finish that single leg with just one hand. Yeah, we, we saw how dangerous Will Feldkamp can be in his win over Trey Munoz in the quarters. Munoz looked like he was in a good position to finish, and Feldkamp just flipped that on its head and ended up pinning Munoz. So we say, you know, Feldkamp is most dangerous when guys are attacking him. And Kekaisen's going to come forward. Kekaisen's going to fire off attacks. And we'll see how this works out. Parker has incredible pressure, pace, consistent leg attacks. He's tough on top. There's a shot from Will Feldkamp. But looking to clear that position is Parker Kekaisen. 
You see, see Felkamp kind of hooking that yeah. elbow. He's got a lot of unique scoring ability, not conventional, but he looks to put guys on their back. There's a two on one. Yeah, it looks like he's got just a lot of little tricks, a lot of little things that he does, a little unconventional, a little different than what you see most guys try to do when it comes to even de defending, but especially in his big move ability. And there you see Felkamp comes up with double underhooks. He likes that position, but Parker looks pretty comfortable here, circles and squares back up. He clears out one of the hooks. So a little better position there for Parker Keckheisen. Oh, nice single leg. This time he gets to his lock. But good hip pressure there from Felkamp. Yeah. You see, he just kind of, he's really good at keeping his feet on the mat. He's kind of long and they're right on the other leg now is Keckheisen. This time, backside double, almost had that foot. But continuing to wrestle really well as Felkamp. Is he going to get this three? Yes, he is. It's not just a second effort required on Felkamp. It's that second, third, fourth effort for you to get the finish. But he gets it. Keckheisen jumps out to a 3-0 lead. Yeah, Will Feldkamp, you know, he's he's fun to watch. Even if he's, you know, guys are in on his legs. If Even if he's getting taken down, it's like, man, how is he defending here? It's just, it's just a little different than what you see. Short stand up there for Feldkamp. He's trying to fight hands and does. He's away for one. 3-1 on the scoreboard, 38 to go in the first. And look at him fishing for that over under. Keckheisen keeping those hips away. Does not want to engage in this upper body. There you see him trying to drop down. Now Metzger from Kekheisen Beautiful. drops down. Is he going to get it? They're going to say no. And I think, you know, because his left hand was under, under. the leg, not over. I feel like he could have given three. Yeah. That's a lot of power to pull the Metzger in from that position. Yeah, man, that was beautiful. It was, it was really nice. Perfectly timed, executed. See a little bit of Lee Roper's influence there. I know mm -hmm. he loved the Metzger. Flip goes red for Feldkamp, who's gonna go under to start the second period. Wrestling for third, Plot and Pinto. That was a war in that quarterfinal bout last night. Wrestling again as we're underway now in the second period. Dropping down to the leg is Keckheisen briefly, but gives it up. Escape Feldkamp makes it 3-2, but not before Keckheisen fires another single leg. But once again, you see Feldkamp controlling that left hand of Keck Keckheisen, preventing that score. Now he's kind of threatening in. Yeah, not only does Feldkamp do a good job keeping his you know, feet on the mat, getting his feet on the mat, feeding those hips, but also working the elbows and bringing Kekaisen up with those overhooks. Really impressive stuff there. And club and underhook on that right side for Feldkamp as he's continuing to pursue those upper body ties. Kekaisen kind of going backwards again. Mm -hmm. If he does it again, they could hit him with a warning, but as I say that, is like, I don't stall, guys. I attack, and once again, on an attack, and almost has a finish, there it is. Yep. and puts him down for three more. What a beastly takedown from Kekheisen. And that's the thing with, with Kekheisen, even with as tricky as Feldkamp is, the offensive abilities, we see, we've seen it. He's got so many different ways to score, whether it's with a single or with a Metzger or forcing that underhook. He's just, you know, you stop one, he's got another angle, another avenue to go, and and you can only defend for so long. Right. Well, he's got the bruiser sort of style with all these slick takedowns. Mm -hmm. It's why he's, you know, right now, the favorite on to win 184 pounds. Yep. He's got a little bit of everything, and it's 53 to go here in the second period. 6-3 lead for Parker Kekheisen on the strength of two takedowns. And I mean, you talk about Cat Guys and already beat number two, Truax. Number three, uh, Chris Foka was in this Sweet field as well. Sweet single here. 
Now trying to get above the knee is Kekai. No doubles off, close to it, but good hit pressure there for a moment. But yet again, Shoot. another takedown for Parker Kekai. This is impressive. And they're gonna go out of bounds. The third takedown of the match for Parker Kekaisen. And there, man, it was just the strength of Kekaisen pulling that double in from in keeping his toes in as well. Really, really, really good stuff there. And navigating the, the boundary as well. Mm -hmm. He had to be a little bit weary of the edge and not going out of bounds on that fish. Now he's gonna kick him and just try to build his lead a little bit more. 9-4, the lead for Kekheisen. Right time, not yet a factor. Two on one for Feldkamp as Kekheisen pulls through that left hand. Yeah. And now underhook on the right side for Feldkamp. And good job circling back in by Kekheisen. Second period comes to a close. We're gonna take a look at that takedown for Kekheisen. Throws by that underhook, drops down, and trips that far side for the three. Yeah, I started to say in this bracket, you had number three, Foca, number four, Munoz, number five, Plot, number six, Feldkamp. It's just, again, a mini NCAA tournament, but that guy's proven to be the best guy. Really separating us, 10-4 with that escape. He's kind of escaped in on the edge here. Gonna probably try to circle back in as Feldkamp once again working from that two on one. He drops, but a good job circling back in by Kekheisen over under front headlock position as he drops down to that foot. Out of bounds they go, 90 left here in the third. A lot of the match been taking place in these tie-ups, tight ties. As you see Feldkamp, no matter what, he's gonna be coming forward. A nice double leg from Parker Kekheisen. Lifts, puts him down, three more for Kekheisen. Almost had some near fall opportunity. 13 to four the score and driving over it. I don't know if he has a bottom leg Turk there. It looks like he mm -hmm. may. He's got the bottom leg Turk, but the hips aren't turned yet. He's got that left side bar. Great pressure here as Kekheisen now approaching riding time. It's been, you know, slowly building it through these takedowns. Has not had a really long extended ride at any point, but the accumulation now has him at 105 and climbing. So. Looking like a major decision at hand here for Kekheisen. And he looks back to his corner. Lee Roper says, keep him down, don't let him out. See if he can finish this match on top. Kekheisen lines up on the right side. As we're underway, the final 20 ticks of this match. With riding time now locked in, it's 14 to four. Dropping down to the leg is Kekheisen and his fell camp thinking desperation, short time to go here. Whoa, the table. Oh, almost into the table. That was not far off. Kekheisen puts him down. Does not want to give up this escape, even though it's relatively inconsequential for the match. Point of pride for Kekheisen to finish on top. Five seconds remaining. Parker Kekheisen continues to look like the number one guy in America at this weight. 14-4, runs through an absolute meat grinder of a tournament, dominant throughout. 14-4 final for yeah. the Panther train. Yeah, really fun match there to watch. Just the offense of Kekheisen is what stood out there. Def despite the defensive abilities of Feldkamp, the offense proved to be the difference. Man, what a great performance. Yeah, there you see the powerful double leg of Keck guys in, finishing through strong. 197 pounds, the next final going on. We're gonna see Trent Hiley back in action against Maryland's Jackson Smith.
from the baby, Danny Quad. Third place from Ohio State, Carson Hartla. Runner up from Oregon State, Travis Whitley. Champion at 174 pounds from South Dakota State, Cade DeVos. Trent Heidley has an opportunity to leave here number two in America if he can win this final match. Jackson Smith takes out NCAA finalist Tanner Sloan in his semi. And now he's got another huge task in front of him with Trent Heidley who has looked so good this year up at 197 and not just in the collegiate ranks. This guy won the Bill Farrell Invitational two weeks ago took out a number of highly credentialed freestylers, including a world silver medalist from Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Not Atlanta, <laughs> the, the country, country near Russia. And we're <laughs> underway, 197 pound final in the red. Trent Heidley, big Ooh. club against Jackson Smith in the black for Maryland. And the physicality for Trent, you thought he was physical at 184, now he's on full feed, 197. That right side underhook gives everyone in America and maybe even the world some problems. Yeah, we saw it on display in the semifinals against Cardenas that he just gets the underhook and he can score from a couple different ways. And he can go, he can throw it by, he can go knee pick on the opposite side. If Trent gets to that underhook, chances are he's gonna try to score. Just pressures forward really well. And he has a, just a great series from that position. Mm -hmm. It's not just, he's not single threaded through that knee blast anymore. He can drop down, he can fire a single leg. And he stays so low, guys have a hard time generating offense against Trent Hiley. He's pressuring forward, he's low to the ground, good position. There's a lot of problems to solve with, with Trent Hiley. Front headlock here for Jackson Smith. Yeah, we talk about what makes Heidley, you know, really good. Jackson Smith in his semifinal bout, and he showed some skills, single leg defense, so incredible, and then really smooth offense, and then that powerful lift to back points was really the difference in that match against Sloan. Yeah, that's a hold he's been hitting for a long time. He's won some big matches. Remember, he, he pinned Bronicle with that mm -hmm. last year at the Tiger style invite. Invite. Now he hits it against Tanner Sloan last round, but it'd be a big deal if he was able to hit something like that <laughs> against Trent Heidley. Not a guy that gives up a lot of near fall points. As he's marching Jackson around the perimeter of the match with that underhook, Smith able to clear out of it. And he's trying to work back in, but it's not easy against the pressure from Trent Heidley as he finds himself on the edge again. Jackson circles back in. They're gonna hit him for stalling. Yeah. I think that's the right call. Yeah. You, you know, you mentioned he's kind of marching him around and Trent kind of gave him an opportunity to come back in and Smith kind of stayed right there on the edge. And they're, they're warning him about the boot scoot. Jackson Smith does have some really yep. nice duck unders. Both sides, he'll hit a wrist duck one way, boot scoot the other, and as he shoots highly off the mat, and they'll go action on the edge. Good little flurry there for Smith, showing a little bit of offense. You see Smith really holding that left elbow back closer to his body. Trying to avoid giving up that underhook position. Jacks that underhook. Again, now it's double unders for Trent Heidley. 15 to go here as he throws it by, that's close. But they go out of bounds. And just runs out of real estate to Jackson Smith or he might have olayed him for three. 13 to go. All square here. One warning against Jackson Smith, the difference. And we'll head to the second, not at zero. 
Yeah, and if you're Smith, you know, you, you take that 0-0, zero, zero, one stall call against you. You felt the underhook. You kind of feel what he's got to offer. And really, you were close to scoring there, Jackson Smith was. No doubt about it. Is highly going to go under to start the second period. Got to be cognizant of that lift and return series from Jackson Smith. If you stand up, you could be in danger against this guy. Claw on that right side. He lifts, but man, Trey yeah. is so ready for that. Kind of just dropped his hips down, got the hand turned and cut. Escape for Heidley. He's up 1-0. And he's once again jacking that underhook. Smith towards the edge. And another attack there from Trent Heidley, and he circles him off. Yeah, I feel like Smith's right on the verge of being called again. He's got to maybe show a little bit more staying close to the center of the mat. And they're going to hit him. He is just going backwards. There's a point making it 2-0. And when there's not a lot of points going up on the board, I, you know, I don't mind some, some calls to try to stimulate a little bit of action here. And, and for Smith, he's got to try to stay on the mat. And it's not necessarily just inactivity from Smith. It's the pressure forward. Mm -hmm. It's rewarding Trent's activity. It's not just Jackson Smith's inactivity that's earned the two stall calls there. Yep. Now he's got a two on one. He shoots him off the mat out of bounds. They're gonna give him the action call. And Alex Clemson not happy. And Clemson would like a word. And in his case is, hey, this guy's on the edge, out of bounds. You're hitting us, you gotta hit the other guy as well. That's his contention. Right. If it's merited, I don't know. But if nothing else, you're, you're kind of playing a seed, maybe. And he's going to get that warning for questioning the judgment, which Clemson knew was going to happen. But yeah. Yeah, but if, you know. He said his piece. If you're Clemson, that's your guy. You want to fight for him. And now it's in the back of the ref's mind. All right. He does that again. Maybe, you know, maybe he do reward the stalling. And, and to be fair, Trent is, is coming forward, but he's not attacking in, in, in a conventional sense. He's not dropping and trying to fire attack legs. He's, his, his offense is more positional right now. And there's a little more of an attack as he clubs to that underhook as they go off the mat out of bounds, trying to circle back in. As there's a lot of activity happening in on the edge. 22 to go here in the second period. Fifteen to go here. And two O Lee for Heidley to score as we head to the third. It's gonna be Smith's choice. He's gonna, I assume, go under. And he is. Heidley covers, lines up left side, and we're underway here in the third. Up right away, and moving is Jackson Smith. He goes out of bounds in five seconds. Yeah, and Heidley's been committed to the ride this season, been committed to working his turns on top, but Jackson Smith, pretty solid underneath. And Heidley continuing to ride Smith's moving a lot, but he's not really improving his position, not coming up to his feet, not getting hand control. So he finds himself in the same position. Restart, 14 seconds, ticked off the clock here in the third period. There's a stand up, a little bit closer for Smith and he's gonna get the escape 2-1, only the stall point, the difference is another. Oh, there's there the underhook, he throws it by for three. Great takedown, persistence paying off for Heidley. I mean, how many times we see him get to that hook, get to that hook, and finally, he has the vulnerability, gets the takedown, 5-1 lead now, and Heidley firmly in the driver's seat now. A little more tenuous with that one point lead. When you get that takedown, four point lead, good position for Trent Heidley to be in. 
Yeah, and that's what you see with Hydley as he digs that underhook. It's like over time, over the period, just kind of wears you down, wears you down. You can only defend it for so long with something that is that powerful and that strong. Turn it. Good job, Jess. Turn it down. Head on head. Find the wrist. Find the wrist. And Jackson Find the finds his way towards that boundary again. Turns and cuts. Oh, is he going to get the one? I don't think so. Good recovery by Hydley to not give up that escape. Smith was close, but good recovery from Trent. Yeah, and Smith, you know, still in this match. He needs to escape in the next 19 seconds, and then and then he needs a takedown. Escape, takedown, ties this match up. And another stand-up for Jackson Smith. But good job dropping down to the leg. But as I say that, turns and faces to Jackson Smith. 5-2, here's the scenario you talked about. Takedown, right out, wood force overtime for Jackson Smith. But right now you see Trent Hiley is not going to let him back in, not going to let him center up. Jackson Smith would love to. But right now Trent loves wrestling from this position with his opponents back towards the zone. And a good job by circling back in from Jackson Smith. Switching up the hand fight a little bit is Jackson Smith. Now seeding a little ground momentarily is Trent Hidley for the first time all match. Jackson brings him to the zone. He looks past by, then looks for a duck. Now, good job recovering, avoiding the takedown from Trent Hidley. Now, underhook on the left side from Trent. They're going to go off the mat, out of bounds. 5-2 the score, 13 to go. It's go time for Jackson Smith. Smith going to take some ground, a stall warning likely coming, and Trent's not going to bo be bothered by that at all, and there it is. Stall warning against Trent. Eight seconds to go. Jackson standing straight up, trying to find some opening, but the openings aren't there. Trent Hidley, a 5-2 winner here. Takes out Jackson Smith. Great performance. Yeah, really good match from Trent Hydley. You know, that's what we've seen all season, all weekend with Hydley. Just able to in impose his will, especially with that underhook. And ultimately, it was that takedown that was the difference. And the pressure earning that stall call. Here we see that right side underhook just kind of blows Man. through it. That was pretty. Mm -hmm. Great match by great tournament from Trent Hydley. Taking home the title there, and his underhook was the difference maker in this match and in this tournament. Yep. Yeah, expect him to move up to number two in the country after this performance. He is a clear challenger for Aaron Brooks. Heavyweight final when we come back.
184 pound place winner, please make your way to the awards area and take your place on the podium. question my ability. It made me feel like I'll never really reach these goals I've set for myself. Now, when I feel fear, I think to myself, I've been here before, again and again. Wrestling has taught me that the only way to succeed is by really embracing my fear. All right, welcome back. Last match of the evening. And it's gonna be a great one. Younger Bastida, Iowa State taking on Michigan's Lucas Davison. And Younger has been one of the standout performers for me, John. Oh, for sure. You know, in this tournament all year, Bastida has not had a close match. His offense has just been another level, but this is a test. This is a different test from anyone that Basita has faced so far. Lucas Davis in number three in the country. Underway here at heavyweight in the red. That's younger Bastida moving up from 197 and he's filled it out nicely. And he's taking on Michigan's All-American. Transfer from Northwestern, Lucas Davison. And expect some really impressive neutral wrestling in this one. Bastida's offense and defense both been working. His counter scoring ability, really impressive. Also his finishing. Yeah, you mentioned Bastida coming up from 197. And it's like, okay, where does he fit in this heavyweight field? You have Kirkfleet, Hendrickson at the top, but then right after that is Lucas Davison. So this match is gonna tell us a lot about where Bastida is. A little bit of a feeling out process so far as Davison Jackson underhook. Body lock for Younger. He's got him on the edge. Are they going to say out of they bounds, went out, out of, of bounds. bounds so close? And that's where Younger is so good when he gets around the body. Went from the double underhooks to the body lock immediately. If that's in the middle of the mat, it's probably a takedown, maybe backs. And they both shove each other off. Minute 44 to go here in the first scoreless. But an exciting opening takedown attempt. And Davison was a 197 pounder three years ago. Moved up all American the last two years at heavyweight. And now, you know, you look at these two guys, you don't really see a size difference, right? They kind of look like they're similar size. Back to the underhooks is Younger Bastida shoving off there is Davison trying to clear out of that tie. Now back to it is Younger Bastida. Can he get it? Davison burying that head, backing out of bounds, stepping in, inside trip for Younger. Stop That's gotta be a coming. warning, and yeah. there it is. I mean, Younger backed him straight to the edge, attacks, and Davison used the boundary to avoid that yeah. score. The right call there. And, and right tactics from Davison. Mm -hmm. Don't get taken down. It's worth giving up a warning to avoid that three. Early impressions is that Younger is going to 
continue to work for those hooks, and Davidson's got to try to keep him out because it looks like a position where Younger can really dominate and potentially score. Yeah, and you know, we mentioned the offensive abilities of Bastida, but we also saw some counter offense against Feldman. You shoot, you expose yourself, you don't finish quick, Bastida's gonna score. Yeah, I mean, he hit three straight 360s. There's a level change from Younger. No score yet, 25 to go here in the first period. For Younger, getting that first period takedown has been kind of his calling card, but not able to get one yet. 17 to go. Davison, very calculated so far, has not really fired an attack yet. There's a high crotch, beautiful shot, trying to double off. Good counter there by Davison, three seconds to go. Man, that was so fast yeah. from both guys. Yeah, kind of an outside step, but Davison, man, really good defense. That's the best defense we've seen against an offensive attack from Bastida. Because in his previous matches, when he gets in, he is pulling it in and finishing yes. so quickly. That's a real credit to Lucas Davison's defense off that opening attack, as he's been able to thwart three really strong attacks from Bastida. Mm -hmm. The question is, how long can he maintain and hold him off? Tripod stand up, Bastida not really gonna commit to the ride as the escape comes. Level change from Davison, little stutter fake. There Back to the underhooks, but Davison clears out of it. I haven't really seen Davison make any kind of no. committed attack just yet. Well, I think you got to be respectful of the defense of yeah. Younger, and that's what we're seeing. But at some point, to win the match, you're going to have to score. Now it's Davison with double unders. Yep, but level change oh. from Younger. What's going to be the call? Action on the edge. 57 to go here in the second. Collar ties for Younger. Now an over collar there. And it feels like something shifted a little bit in the hand fight. At the beginning, it felt like mm -hmm. Gonger was taking a, maybe a little bit more ground, but it seems like Davison might be winning the hand fight here later in the second period. Oh, nice little, wow. oh my gosh, look at this carry. He's in the air looking for the takedown. Nothing wow. yet, passing the leg is Lucas Davison. No points. And now hipping up in, Davison now doubling off. It's a single leg oh for Bastida to come goodness. off the mat oh out of bounds. My goodness. What was that? What an exchange. The carry had him up, up, up in the air, but Davison was able to recover. Now they're talking about something. I don't think you challenge this. No. I don't think there's any challenge here. There's no takedown there. What an exchange. <laughs> you see him in the air, you're like, okay, he'll score this. Nope. And we're gonna have a look at that, I think, at the break here. Look at this. Look at this Man. beautiful carry. He takes that underhook, whoop, throws it by. And lifts gets it his straight under. up, but the awareness of Davison to yep. dive under, get that leg. Not in a danger position there. I don't know how that doesn't get a single danger zone swipe, but wouldn't have mattered. I don't think it would have been three anyways. So now, Lake comes in. Now this is a, it's, it's always kind of a question. How's Young yeah. gonna be able to get away from the elite riders here? Of course, only been wrestling folk style a handful of years. Now he gets away pretty consistently, but Davison, Gonna commit to this ride. Probably sees that as his opportunity, but as I say that, Younger working for a reversal, but now that could be slowing him down and preventing him from getting that escape. The pursuit of reversals can be very, very dangerous, but now turning in, nothing yet for Younger Bastida. He's on the edge. Can they give a reversal there? He's got the hips covered. They're gonna give two. it two on the reversal. Riding time, not a factor. 
And now is he going to push him off? Yes, go out of bounds. 2-1 on the scoreboard. Now if you're younger, he takes some big breaths as he heads back to center. Mm -hmm. Do you try to ride here? Do you let him up and work for that takedown? That's the question. Yeah, I think the escape is imminent here for Davison. Don't expect younger to commit to much of a ride. And a caution on Younger. And we got blood. And so they're gonna clean up Younger's nose. Got a little blood on the top of it. As they work to clear that out. The scenario here is this, 2-1 lead for Bastida. There's a minute left, he's on top. Have to assume Davison probably gonna get a relatively yep. quick escape. So we're probably gonna have around a minute of neutral that'll likely settle this. Remember, Davison has yeah. the lone warning in this match and Bastida has consistently been attacking. Uh, it's been all counter for Davison, apart from a couple aggressive underhooks, he's not really attacked. So is that in the back of the official's mind as we enter this final minute? Hopefully it, it gets settled. On the mat, yeah. On the mat. Yeah, it's gotta be in the back of the official's mind. Gotta be in the back of Davison's mind as well. And he's coming forward with that in his mind. 2-2 two, two on the scoreboard, right to off actor. Nice single leg here from Lucas Davison. Good wizard here, near side cradle, drops down to the leg. Shin Wizards, they go towards the boundary from Younger Bastida. So he's trying to keep that foot away, trying to pull him back in is Lucas Davison. Younger, very, very comfortable in this position. We've seen him defend from here many times in the past. Dropping down the foot, trying to pull him back in close, but no cigar for And how much Lucas is that? Davison. Is that's gotta be stolen as well, yeah. So a warning apiece now. And I think Davison had the right idea. Yeah. Get the foot off the mat. Don't try to finish on the mat with Younger. 26 to go as we saw a really strong committed attack from Lucas Davison. Does that give him a little more confidence? High crunch. Head outside now for Younger Basir. Trying to work for the finish. 17 seconds to work for it. Standing single. Fighting in. Finishes backside. He's got it. There's He's got three. it. Take down for Younger. Eight seconds to go. He takes the lead, 5-2, now just four seconds. And he's gonna hang on as they Stall call. warn him for stalling as time expires. It's 5-3 in favor of Bastida, but just two seconds to go. And the there Cyclones have a champion here, and the Cyclones are the champions of CKLV. Younger Bastida, the cherry on top with a title here against Lucas Davison. Great match. Younger Bastida, late takedown off a beautiful high yeah. crotch, the difference. Great match, man, from both Davison and Bastida. But in the end, we've been saying this, it's the offensive wrestler who gets the victory, and Bastida was offensive from start to finish in the late takedown. Younger Bastida is our champion at 285 pounds. And man, what a set of 10 finals. Incredible tournament. Incredible finals. You know, start to finish, it, it was amazing. And, you know, younger Bastida able to find his way, bringing it home with this final score. Finishes backside double there, gets the three. What a job and what a what a performance. And man, really, really tight team race. Iowa State just edges it out in this final round. Congrats to the Cyclones who win a team title here against you know, an, an incredible field. The best field we're gonna see in any tournament until the NCAAs. As we see some champions getting crowned, we're gonna leave you with some final highlights, some, some of the great action we saw throughout this tournament. Appreciate you guys tuning in for this entire weekend of wrestling. Now, next week, we're gonna have the Ironman coming up on flow, and then two weeks from now, Senior Nationals in Fort Worth, an Olympic Trials qualifier. Appreciate you guys tuning in as you take a look at some of these incredible highlights. Yeah, we saw Peyton Robb at 157, Isaac Olenek at 165, Kate DeVos. Incredible performances from start to finish. Thank you so much for joining us here in Las Vegas. I am John Kozak for Christian Piles. 
Have a great weekend.